the other thing that Indrani and I are enjoying and we're taking we could easily just watch it in a single day but we're we're watching it an episode a day is the fall of the house of usher oh, yeah. mike yeah. flanagan's series on netflix for those of you who've seen it particularly uh, i believe it's in episode three Whew. flanagan's writing man everything about flanagan he's just a master and his writing he has this there's this monologue about lemons Freaking A. I, when it ended, I turned to John. I said, that's one of the best monologues I've ever heard. So, highly recommend it. Have you seen anything of Mike Flanagan's? Have you been talking to me this whole time? Idiot. Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid Rex with Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow the Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you to everybody who supports on Patreon. Follow us with your Twitter account, subscribe, and hit the like button. Ooh. And today we got a um, Kieran Johar interview. Great. Uh, and this was one that was released just a few days ago because of, for the 25th anniversary of Coach Coach Hotai. Yeah. Uh, he talks about his whole career, uh, with Shah Rukh Khan, a bunch of different uh, stuff Great. throughout his career. Cool. Uh, also, uh, I don't know if you saw who they released for the first guests of... I have not seen that. Uh, I, I have not seen the guest list. If it was sent to me, uh, I I would avoid it because I don't want to have spoils. So, and first, Pika. oh great, their first time combined on the show. That's awesome. Uh, That'll be so fun to Pika. watch. Uh, so it'll be absolutely wonderful. I'm very excited about that. Uh, when does that start? When does the first episode drop? It's soon, isn't it? November something. I think it's actually Thursday. Oh, okay. Awesome. I um, I think we get it on Hulu, right? That's where we got it last time, right? I don't remember that. Because we don't have Hotstar here. We used to. Then yeah. They, then they took that away. It went bye-bye. Um, but anyways. It went the way of the dodo bird. Uh, and this is from Pink Villa is the channel. They're big Indian news or whatever. I don't know what they're classified as, but they're big. Uh, but I don't know if we've actually seen an interview from them. It is actually technically called a, uh, I think they call it a master class. Okay. With... Comparable to what Vishal did. Yeah. Where it's just a, it's a group and there's a moderator and they're asking questions in front of an audience. Wow. How did you know that? Is with someone whose cinema has left an cultural impact, not just in India, but across the border. 25 years back, he made his debut with Kuch Kuch Hota Hai. And little did he know that 16th October 1998. Wow, I didn't, I wish he would have talked more. More, yeah. October 1998 will change his and our lives forever. So ladies and gentlemen, can we all put our hands together for Karan Jhar? You could argue he's one of the most impactful directors in all of India. Yeah. Thank you. Can't believe it's been 20 In terms of years. his impact on just uh, everything. My God. Yes. 20, huh? What, what, what? Silver Jubilee, huh? I should have worn my shiny silver jacket in the right. Uh, silver Jubilee, my God. I, I feel like that was a different era. I felt like, I, I feel like I was a different person. Like, it doesn't feel like, when I see like some making clippings, um, and you know, a lot of those, uh, unfortunately, uh, in the deluge, uh, we had a go down in Mahalakshmi and all without any backups, unfortunately, a lot of our making footage, a lot of our stills, a lot of those memories during the making of Kuch Kuch Hota just went. We have nothing. Oh, we have nothing. We had so bummer. many, bummer. Uh, you know, so much BTS and so many behind the scene interviews, moments captured, you know, that we were doing it like the AD team was doing it. We had nothing. And you know, those days, we weren't smart enough to have a backup, which was silly of us. But like, so unfortunately I have nothing. But the memories are intact. They're basically. entrenched in my, in my, in my memory bank. Yeah. So firstly, thank you again, sir, for attending this Pink Villa Masterclass. Thank you for having me. So, you know, my first question to you is, you started shooting for Kuch Kuch Hota probably when you were at the... 25 years old, I think? 24. 24 years old. Do you remember the process of putting this entire setup together? It's, it was one of the biggest ensemble film ever, so. Oh God. Everyone's seen the film here, right? <laughs> okay. Like here it is. More than once. Who hasn't seen it. Put your hand up. <laughs> there, oh. there, I was right. There has to be that. It's the Gen Z kids. I have one, two, three, four. Do me a favor. Please watch it. 
Please watch it. Please right watch now, it. on your phones. Uh, it's available uh, on Netflix and Amazon, and I think uh, you might have a good time watching it, you know, especially after our conversation. Uh, let me tell you, it was very bizarre. Um, I was in AD on Dilwale Dulhaniya Le Jayenge, um, and uh, it was in one of those moments, you know, Shah Rukh, uh, and I, you know, I got really close during the making of the film, and you know, I was much, of, I was lost and scared on the sets of that film because I had never been on a film set prior to that, um, and it was Aditya Chopra that actually an AD. made me nice. become an AD, and he convinced my family, and because my, I was all set to go somewhere else to study, and my mother was really worried that this was not the profession for me, and she, my father thought that my temperament wasn't cut out to be in the movie. She says, you're too soft natured and you know, I don't know what she thought that would happen to me when I entered Bollywood. Uh, so um, somehow the other Adi convinced her and you know, I began my journey as an AD and when I joined in as an AD, I wanted to be a costume designer. So my first assignment was to do Shah Rukh's clothes. Um, and that's how I actually got close to Shah Rukh, uh, you know, in the process. And then one day in Switzerland, when we were shooting Tujhe Dekha, uh, not Tujhe Dekha, what am I saying? Yeah, Tujhe Dekha, Tujhe Dekha, I'm sorry. It's all blood. On the top of a mountain in Switzerland. Um, we were waiting for Kajal actually um, to get into costume and come. And he looked at me and he said, you know, when you do your first film, I want to do it as um, an actor. And I had like half experience on the making of that film. So I was like, he's just being polite because it's cold. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, everyone's missing home. Everyone's being nice to each other. So I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Uh, and then Kajal joined in and she's saying, what are you talking about? And Shahrukh said, you know, if Karan does his first film, I'll do it. She said, yeah, then so will I. It'll be fun. And it was just left of that. And I was like, I went back and told Adi, like, you know, they're just being sweet. And like, you know, why would anyone want to do a film with me after one film of experience? Like, I even, I don't know if I'm equipped. When I got back from the outdoor, Shah Rukh called my dad and uh, he said, you know, he called my father, Tom Uncle, we don't know why. Uh, <clears throat> and he said, Tom Uncle, uh, my next film after Duplicate, because he was already du doing Duplicate for my dad. He was like, that film I will do, which Karan will direct. Um, and I start that in October 1997. So my father was like, but like Karan, so then my mother was like, you don't know anything. What is Shah Rukh talking about? So I said, I don't know. He's just being sweet, I suppose. That's crazy but that Shah Rukh called October, specifically. It released October 19th, uh, 20, uh, 1995. And, uh, or, or was it 20th? One of these days, 20th, 20th. Um, the very next week, he followed up with me and he was shooting for Chahat. And uh, he was like, come and tell me what story you had. And I had no story. I had no story. <laughs> but I lied to him and I said I did. Because I was like, I don't want to lose this opportunity. Yeah. He was like, if Shah Rukh Khan says, show me a story, you come up with a story. Puja for a song for Bhat Sab. And uh, I just randomly, while flying to Jaipur, I thought of this scene between um, uh, a father and daughter, you know, in this jam, the scene that is there between Shah Rukh and I just thought, I narrated that moment to him and he said, okay, write the whole film. I went and I took a year to write Kuch Kuch Hota Hai and it was first two stories which I merged into one and um, I narrated it to them in April 1997 to Shah Rukh and Kajal and me and, uh, and nobody else had heard it and I really thought that they'd throw me out, you know, literally after that narration because I didn't know what I was narrating. Uh, but at the end of the film, he was like, yeah, we start October and uh, that's what we did. We started October. The big struggle happened in casting Tina and then Aman, which was Salman and Rani's roles. So for Tina, I went to about eight main lead actresses and all of them said no. Um, I first went to Tina herself, Twinkle, because I was very close to her and I wrote the character keeping her in mind, but she said no. And subsequently many, but every everyone literally said no to me and I said, now I'll have to wear that orange skirt and walk into college because like <laughs> no one's going to do that part. Uh, ironically, Aditya Chopra had seen the promo of a film called Raja Ki Aigi Bharat and he called me and he said, you should go and meet Rani Mukherjee. I think she's going to be a star. So I met her and narrated the film and uh, she also said, give me two days to think. So I was like, you know, now it's done, no one will do it. Uh, two days later, she called me and she said, how will you convince an audience that Shah Rukh is in love with me over Kajal? Because Shah Rukh and Kajal are <laughs> um, And I was like, it's true. I, I, it's my first film, I'll do everything. I'll work very hard to convince. So she said, I'm going with your conviction. And she came on and literally then I went to everybody else for Salman's role and nobody said yes to me. Um, uh, 
I met Salman at a party at Chunky Pandey's party and he was like um, you know only only an absolutely confident person will do this film and I'm that person why don't you come and meet me tomorrow I went and narrated the film to him at the first half he said I'm doing it but I said but Salman you come in the second half <laughs> he's like uh, no I don't care I know where it's going and uh, I'm doing it I really like your dad and I like your energy and I'm doing the film and I walked out of there and I was like, Salman Khan is doing this film. And I called up Adi, you know, and he was like, oh my God, the film just got really big. And, you know, there was already Shah Rukh and Kajal and Rani was this promising new actor, Shetan Gulam. And we started shooting in October 1997. Um, with no hiccups, Himesh, uh, the film was ready in July. And um, on my 25th birthday, we were shooting the summer camp portion and it released October 16th and uh, it was just the most surreal moment of my entire life. I, I, I wasn't there actually when it was released. We had some threatening calls at that time. So me and my parents Aww. had to fly out um, on the opening night itself because for security purposes, we just needed to be able. So That's I never awful. saw the film in back home at all. I used to just have friends who would call me and you know put the phone on the audience that makes me sad. when Salman enters or any big moment in the film and I would just literally have tears coming down because I wasn't there and I couldn't see it so I, I went to see it in London a couple of times um, but it just didn't feel the same like it's sad that I've not seen Kuch Kuch Hota Hai with an audience with in my country it just, just when I came back after six weeks um, it was the award season time and you know um, you won it all. and then yeah and like winning those awards my, I remember holding that first Filmfare award and I was like I, I couldn't breathe first because I because you know I, it was just like I don't think I can describe that moment because as a child you've always imagined you know being on that stage winning that that award um, seeing your dreams come true we all have dreams right we all want to go somewhere with our lives uh, and this was an impossible dream in my head and when it came true uh, I was like I don't think it gets better than this and I just had to be grateful to the universe for everything that happened because when I see the trajectory I'm like I don't know how this happened I was not meant to be here Aditya Chopra convinces me Shah Rukh Khan does the film Kajal does the film Salman Khan does the film Rani Mukherjee does the film the film gets made it gets, and people kind of like it Barring the five people here, you haven't seen it. Uh, uh, the uh, people liked it, and like it kind of grew in pop culture. And like I, I really still feel like when I wa I haven't seen the film in a really long time. But I, I really don't know how things happened. Like I don't know when you ask me how the story came to me or any of that. I can't give you any explanation. Just destiny. It, it was also just a lot of my love for Hindi cinema. Yeah. There's so much of Yash Chopra in there. There's so much of uh, Suraj Parjatya. There's so much of Raj Kapoor. So many influences I've had as a kid. I just like, for me, just that film was like one big dream. But so you know, you j like like you said that the casting, like Shah Rukh came and he said he's doing your film. You went to Salman, he said he's doing the film without even hearing the second half. Do you think casting back then was easier and it is much more mechanical now? Oh yeah, oh my <laughs> god. People were like so much more, it was on faith, trust and energy. Yeah. Today I'm like, actors take too long and take themselves way too seriously yeah. sometimes. And I'm like, yeah, sometimes you've got to just take that plunge you know in those days it was just about the energy between director and actor and yeah. between a, a narration like you know it was just sometimes we didn't have like do you know I, there's no there's no full bound script of Kuch Kuch Hota that exists um, I used to narrate it I had never written it so when <laughs> the film released Nikhil Advani had to write the screenplay That's down hilarious. from the film we didn't have a screenplay like I used to write scenes on like those days we weren't even on the computer we edited, uh, we edited on the Steam Deck, there was no Avid. It was like I should write in Hindi on pages and Xerox those pages and send them to the actors. Uh, we used to write those and many a time we like wow. changed scenes last minute. I would change and add dialogues because it was just like actors were there on good faith. It was like you said, so much easier. And people used to do films for love sometimes. Yeah? Today, I suppose there's love and lots of money that's required for <laughs> But Kuch Kuch Hota Hai changed the lives of each and every person associated with the film. How did it change for you? Did it add pressure for your second film which you made, which was Ketri Ji? Yeah, I mean, uh, because the film had achieved, you know, um, success and I was very grateful. Um, then I think, um, I remember telling my father that I want to work with Mr. Bachchan, Mrs. Bachchan 
Shahrukh Kajal, Hrithik Roshan and Kareena Kapoor. And he thought I had gone mad. He looked at me and he said, Beta, make a picture. Don't plan three projects. I said, no, these are all one film. So he was like, what? He said, what is this movie? So I was like, it's a family saga. And I really wanted this cast. Um, and I went uh, one morning with the story to Shahrukh first. And he said, I don't need to know. I'm, I'm on for the film. Uh, went to Kajal, she was shooting at Filmistan Studios, the, the second meeting, and she heard it and she was like, I'm on. I went to Mr. Bachchan, uh, met him, and he was very gracious and kind and wonderful. And Then I left Mr. Bachchan's house and I called up Jaya Auntie and I said, I want to meet you. She said, but you were just here. So I was like, no, I'm coming in a professional capacity. So I came back and I narrated the film to her. Uh, the idea, I mean, the long form idea of it. And she was like, I can never say no to you. Um, I went to Dugu's house and uh, Kahuna Pyare hadn't released, but I had a lot of faith in Gudu? him. And he was like really happy and excited to be on. And my last meeting of the day was with. What do they call him? Gudu. Uh, uh, I met her and she was like. Sh- I, oh, is that I, his I, name? I said hello movie? and she was on. Like she was like, yeah, like we're doing it. Like I yeah. don't want to know the story. Just tell me, you know, when you sign. So uh, the, the interesting part is that I signed all six actors on one day. <laughs> uh, it was all on <laughs> the same day. Wow. And, uh, Such a different time. And uh, it was the best day of my life. And that's how easy it was. Uh, you know, it was just wonderful that actors came on on energy, faith, trust and belief. When the film released, The Rest is History, it's like one of the biggest blockbusters that we have seen till date. But Karan, sir, I remember that back in the day you had given an interview where you said that uh, all through the year, every in the start, first of the, of the year, people were saying uh, K3G is the biggest film of the year. And then suddenly came Gadar, which changed the tides yeah. in that year and that added immense pressure on you. Oh, Gadar you know, came that, that same year, huh? Mm. Um, and I'd like to share this with everyone. It's, you know, the lessons you get in um, in life can really ground you. Um, and I feel like that year for me was very critical, not for me just as a filmmaker, but for me as a human being. I feel very strongly that, you know, when you start flying, there is sometimes destiny or sometimes circumstances way of saying that, you know, uh, stay in your place because success and failure both can happen in your life and you know when you get success easily there is still a struggle uh, to maintain it or to achieve it uh, that year the beginning of the year for some reason I was like um, I was like I'm making the biggest film of the year like what's going to get bigger than this I'm, go- I'm going to sweep all the awards in my head these were all my thoughts I wasn't saying it loud but I was thinking it and I was very front footed and then I saw Lagan um, oh, geez, in year. June what a year uh, when it released wow and I walked out and I was like <laughs> I didn't I think I've seen a cinematic marvel like I feel it'll be down in the ages is one of the best feature films ever made I was blown away by it and I was I was like mine is like nothing but then I saw Gaddar the next day and I went crazy about its commercialness and its its solidness and the audience was going crazy. And then I saw Lagan again it, and the cricket, it, the theater became a cricket stadium. Then I was like, I took a break and I was like, okay, now I went back to my film. Then I went and saw Chandni Ba. And it was one oh, of the most respected what? films of the year. Wow, one what a year. Dil Chahta High came out that year? He was a naughty, bratty kid. I was like, what is this? Is this like the greatest um, year in Hindi and cinema? Chata, and I was like, oh my God, I thought I was cool with that cool chain. Uh, I'm like, far from cool. What is really cool is Dil Chahta Hai. Genuinely, the cool syntax of cinema started from Dil Chahta Hai. By the end of it, I was like from becoming the front-footed filmmaker, I felt like I was the underdog. And then Kabhi Khushi Kabhi Kam released and we had really bad reviews. Like everyone was like old wine, new bottle, same thing, turned over. And I was actually really depressed when it released. Um, I remember there was a trade uh, critic who, um, there were only two or three critics in those days, trade analysts. Um, and he gave a really bad review to the film. Uh, and he wrote at the end, um, overall the film will disappoint all concerned. And I was like, I remember reading and my friend came in to my house. It was Saturday evening. And I was like, my film's going to flop. Like it's going to flop. Like he has said it, that he knows the numbers. Like it's going to flop. What's going on? Instead of taking me like, you know, somewhere to kind of get fresh air, he took me to a psychic. Uh, and, and the psychic is pulling cards out for me and I'm crying. And I'm like, what's going to happen? And then I called Anil Thadani, who was my, who's a massive distributor, producer and exhibitor. And uh, I called him and he was like, Karan, are you going crazy? This is pre-Eid. Just wait for Monday. You know, uh, when your Eid holiday kicks in on Monday, you'll see those days we've only single screens, right? So it was a big impact when you released before, on during the Ramzan time. Um, 
and on monday i said uh, what what do i have to expect is on monday if your advance is good for the second week that means you're home so i was like i did i took a mannat i walked to a temple uh, i was very dramatic in my head i was like oh my god if this film flops what am i going to do my dad had told me if this film flops we have to go back to our old house because we put all our money into this film whatever we made on kuch kuch hota hai and imagining us like you know my mother and my father and me with suitcases leaving that ghar you know that that hindi film scene ke you know you know you turning around and background music is very sad and you're looking at that last and i was visualizing all this <laughs> Uh, can do anything uh, not dramatic you know, the lane of liberty is next to bombay hospital liberty is where the film was playing and there was a, like a massive traffic jam you know and i was like getting very anxious because anil tarani was meeting me at the cinema and i just turned around and i said uh, to someone i said ye traffic kyu hai you know he said are advance booking ka line hai so i was like what <laughs> i said kis picture ke liye he said are ye family picture bani hai kabhi kuch kabhi ga mein and he was very irritated he said because he was also stuck in the traffic and like in high speed you've seen those heroines run na? um like i have run like that like, through the traffic literally to anil tarani and he took me to the household board and it was all household for week 2 and i was like so then the film is a hit he said call all the distributors now he think your film is a massive hit so i was like oh god okay so i called everybody barring the punjab distributor who said ha bahut badi hit hai lekin gaddar jaisi nahi hai right like, yeah so, so funny wo main main sahi lunga but flop to nahi hai isne kya bol rahe ho sare full shows ja rahe so i was like oh my god thank god but then you know the award season which i had so enjoyed with kuch kuch and i won no award to kabhi kuch kabhi gaon i was even nominated for a couple i think uh, that was like a really grounding experience for me i felt back uh, you know back on my feet and realized and that life lesson that i learned still keeps me on stead today because i realized that you got to just work and don't expect anything from the beginning because there's no replacement to hard work nothing else but so through the 25 years you have made seven films You have a hundred percent track record, seven hit films. When you look back at all the seven films, is there anything which surprised you the most? It was uh, not surprising, but I was a bit like um, taken aback with the moral policing for Kabhi Alvida Na Kena. Thank. Uh, I thought that I was making an unusual subject. It was about infidelity, and you know, um, I was also deconstructing Shah Rukh's. uh absolutely pure image you know and you know showing the gray side of life thursday night i went to see it was a preview at ad labs um and there was a scene uh there was a very traditional couple and i was sitting behind them and there was a scene when sharuk and rani check into a hotel room yeah. you know so there was this lady who looked at her husband like that and she said <laughs> dream sequence che <laughs> so so she got pacified with the fact that ye dream sequence hai actually ho hi nahi sakta na they can't really step outside the boundary of their marriage when they realized it was not a dream sequence nahi aati the uh they left uh, they all they both got up <laughs> and walked out and i was like oh my god the reality of like you know judgment hit me and then when i stepped out there was a lady and her daughter was crying in on the corner you know so i thought she was very moved by the film but the mother came to me and she looked at me she said tu karan jo hai to i said ji he said meri beti na abhi abhi uska divorce hua hai aur maine bola mood theek karne ke liye main tujhe karan jo ki picture dikhaungi aur tune ye picture theek banayi hai aise banate picture so i was like ye hote hai hamare sanskar i was like uh, i was like I was like, uh, by that time I realized that the film had done phenomenally overseas, but in India it had done good business, not great business. But I realized that there was such a divided house on Kabhi Alvida. So when you said I was surprised, I was not surprised. I was more disappointed actually. And then I went within and and realized that you know that no matter when, when you make a film that hits home sometimes, whether it was Kabhi Alvida then or Gehrhaniya today, it'll always have this. this polarized response and i was so used to getting just love that the polarization really threw me off but how do you deal with the appreciation and criticism and has it changed evolved over the years right from the day of your debut till now it's always stressful imesh um ours is the only business that is judged on a friday by each and every one and the time that i am coming from there was no social media yeah. to now where everyone is a critic yeah. everyone the critics are critics the regular audience are critics people start meeting me in like my own building and say 100 crore karegi and i'm like 
you I mean like they asked me that question when Bombay Talkies was releasing. I'm like, how can Bombay Talkies be on big crowds? I'm like, like please think and when you are. I said, uncle, sara soch ke, you know, like you know, like I, if, it's not easy to achieve business like that, and you get trolled. you get massively um, criticized or praised but everything is there for you like everyone youtubers are reviewing uh, instagrammers real pe- reeler like everyone is giving you their comments on the film so you think he's seen I one of our reviews school where i watch everything because i believe that's the only way you should be aware of the ground reality because many filmmakers and actors i believe live in like 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 their own bubble and when you live in a bubble there's no way that you will find out that what really the audience thinks of your film so i I have become resilient and grown a thick skin now because God knows that people say some really terrible things about me and I'm like God you don't know me I'm not half as bad as you think and there's one snake emoji that keeps popping up I don't know why uh when my name comes and like and I'm like I've seen all the trolling I've seen it all um and I just like said that okay you know this is like an occupational hazard it's part um and parcel of what what you are because people who don't have faces and names sometimes tend to just take out their day's anger on somebody yeah. and sometimes they have a perception of who you are without really knowing who you are mm-hmm. you know they believe it off you and they create that perception and then they attack you um i want to kind of realize it's okay you know i realize that now i take it with a tinge of humor i even laugh at some of the things people say are quite creative even when they when they're trolling you actually they're doing it quite creatively some of the memes are hilarious i see everything like i i realized that i shouldn't be an isolated filmmaker i should be an inclusive filmmaker and read everything and i do true and i, I think that's the way you grow as well when you learn mm-hmm. from whatever yeah. especially when it's constructive so yeah well who knows what's really constructive really? um especially on the internet the time, i don't know <laughs> so it's constructive criticism uh but like there are a few critics that i take seriously that i that i read but the others also i read and i love some of the youtubers they're quite hilarious um and they get really angry when they don't like your film like you know they start screaming loudly oh no oh, that's not us and i'm like but aren't you white like <laughs> Like why are you screaming? <laughs> and then there are suddenly people outside, like cinema halls, who have become self-proclaimed critics, and like, and I see everything. Can say you know of the films like that, of the films of that you have seen, if he sees everything, actually all of them have family emotions, drama, comedy. But one film which stands out for me is My Name Is Khan. Yes, that is unlike anything that you have made. How did my the subject of My Name Is Khan come your way? It was actually started. Uh, I was in um, a dinner with people um, in New York, actually, and um, very educated. Some of them were college uh, friends of mine. Some of them were friends of mine in New York. All educated in some Ivy League schools and colleges. Uh, some of them investment bankers. Some of them from the Bay Area, you know, from IT zones, and evolved, educated, intelligent people. And they were saying some really, um, to me, inappropriate things. about the about what i believe is the misconception of a religion and i and i looked at them and i said i cannot believe all you educated people are saying stupid things like this mm. i was like and i walked home to my i walked to my hotel it was many blocks down and i was like you know i felt very strongly that i had to tell a story that came from my core and it was about about misconceptions about what we believe and what it truly is um and then my research started on my name is khan and shibani bhatija actually who wrote the screenplay story um uh of the film she helped me with the research we went to lots of institutions in you know post 911 there was a totally different world that we were dealing with and there were so many stories and actually my name is khan is based on a slightly uh, a true story of course which was be then you know exaggerated and and took the liberties cinematically but it actually has its original true story about someone we couldn't speak about because the family was not um not comfortable with us talking about this particular person but he had said to his wife that you know I'm going to go and find the president of America and say my name is Khan and I'm not a terrorist and um and uh, and Shivani who beautifully brilliantly and diligently worked on the screenplay she did massive research because I felt that it was out of my depth as a, a, a writer you know i needed that support system and she gave it to me like it's entirely her baby as a writer and i felt it was the most i was the wrongest casting as director but i took it up mm. as a challenge because i feel like the more uncomfortable you are the more you will push yourself because sometimes when you when you lie in a comfort zone you tend to get complacent 
I was in a very uncomfortable zone as a filmmaker. My name is Khan and I had to prove to myself that if you push me to a terrain that I'm not comfortable with, I can perhaps still deliver. Um, it was the most challenging film for me, uh, you know, to actually direct because you have to understand so much about the condition, uh, you know, first and then the climate and, uh, and had to be hypersensitive about the projection and portrayal because you're dealing with a sensitive subject. Um, it was the toughest film for me to direct, I have to say. Was Shah Rukh sir and Kajal ma'am surprised when you came to them and narrated the subject? Yes, um, both of them. I mean, like both asked me, um, you know, that this is an interesting and an exciting choice. But they were so on board with it because um, I think it was the belief that three of us had built over a period of so many films. I remember Rajkumar Hirani sir once said that he was planning Munna Bhai Chale America which was based on a similar subject and then came My Name Is Khan, he saw it, he loved the it. Third and then eventually that led mm. him to even... But and then he the saw film. My Name Is Khan Did and he, he said... Did he ever have a conversation with you on the similarities? Ke? No, he just, we just spoke at, uh, at uh, we met at an event and he said, Ari, I didn't realize that you were telling a similar story, you know, and, and he, I know his Munna Bhai Chali America was similarly about something like this, but like, I don't know the details of that stuff, but yes, we had a conversation about it. So, you know, I think your friendship with Shah Rukh Khan, I think it would be 30 years, you know him since 30, 30 to 93, 30, 94, 30 years. yeah, 30 years. I met him on the sets of Karan Arjun for the first time in uh, 1993. 30 years, basically. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the first ever conversation that you had with him? Yes. Uh, on the sets of uh, Karan Arjun, uh, my dad took me because my dad was offering him duplicate at that time and they were discussing dates and monies etc. And Kajal was on that set, they were shooting the song Jati Hume. Yeah. Uh, and I, ca I remember calling Kajal and I said, I'm coming with my father, I don't know anyone. Um, you know, at least you'll be there, you know. So she said, yeah, yeah, I'm there and I'm, you know. So I went, but the time I reached, she was giving her shot. So she was busy and Shahrukh was wearing this bright orange Levi's shirt, I still remember. And you know, you had built a perception and heard about movie stars and how they are. And um, I had this impression that movie stars are a certain way and like it was, my father was a producer and he had dealt with many. Um, and Shah Rukh, there was a lot of talk that he's actually uh, kind of like um, arrogant uh, and like that he was not arrogant, like he was like, the word is like he was like, he knew what he was doing and he comes from uh, drama and theater and all that. But in one minute, I was just swept away by the magic of Shah Rukh Khan because he was not only just charming, chatty, he kept asking me questions about my school and college. He was so personable and he looks into your eye and speaks to you. And that is the most beautiful part about Shah Rukh is that when he's with you, he's present with you. He doesn't, he doesn't give a damn We've about you. We've noticed that in his interviews. From. just yep. you. And yep. he's talking I would love to know that in an interview with us. And speaking to you and genuinely wanting to know. Fully and engaged. I, in five minutes, I think I'd become a fan. Like, I was like, like, oh my God, like, this is the most amazing human being I think I've ever met. He was magical. Like, you know, it's like, and I feel like most people who haven't met Shah Rukh Khan have missed out. Because that is like, that moment, and it remains still today. We are 30 years, a deep family friendship. And even now, when I speak to him, he's magnetic. He's majestic, of course, but he's magnetic. Uh, that is not the first time though I met Shah Rukh Khan. Uh, I was, did a show which I'm very embarrassed about and there's a reel making the round called Indra Dhanush when I was uh, 15 years old. Um, Anand Mehendu, the director, called my father and uh, called my mother and said that, do you have a very fat son? Uh, uh, and I was very large. I'll say plus size today. Um, I was very, very plus sized. Um, and my mother was, of course, very defensive. And she said, no, he has puppy fat, it'll go. Uh, uh, but uh, he wanted a very plus sized person for his serial called Indra Dhanush. Um, so I went to his office um, to audition because it was summer holidays. I just done my 10th standard. And there was somebody sitting right opposite me doing the crossword and drinking tea. We sat for a couple of hours because Anand uh, was busy in editing. He sat, I sat, we just stared at each other once or twice and I continued just staring into space because I didn't want to, I'm so stressed. First time I'm going, like, it's all new for me. Anand walked out and went to this person and said that, okay, so we're making this show called Indra Dhanush. And he's like, you know, I just came to tell you that I don't want to do TV anymore. I want to do film, but I really like the tea in your office and I wanted to finish the crossword. And he walked out, he left. And Anand said like, how strange was that? I'm, I'm like, I, find, I said, I found him familiar, who is he? So he said, his name is Shah Rukh Khan. And he did 4G. So I said, yeah, yeah, right, right, he was in 4G, that's why. And then 
the rest was like he wasn't in the show and Akshay Anand at that did that same role that Shah Rukh was meant to do. It's so bizarre because when I met Shah Rukh many years later, um, I told him and he remembered. He said, "Oh, it was you who was sitting opposite me." He said, "Because we literally faced each other in a tiny room for four hours without speaking to each other." But who knew at that point that this particular huh. incident and this particular moment will be so defining for me in my career? Since then, the rest like thirty years of journey with him, it, it has been magical. I'm I'm sure. So you know, Rocky or Rani ki prem kani. When you talk of that film, uh, I think everyone over here, the Gen Z, has seen uh, the film. I think, yeah. 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 <laughs> when you talk of that film, you have directed seven films, which include Student of the Year as well. Every film has had a Shah Rukh Khan association. Student of the Year was produced by him. Were you ever tempted at any time? Oh, very. To have a cameo in Rocky, right? Like <laughs> you know, uh, the entire AD team, and I think some of them are here, will say that in Tum Kya Mile. uh they said the best moment should be like you track away from uh alian ranveer and just go to sharukh and kajal <laughs> and they, they look at them and you know alian realizes that this is pure love because they represent love and i was like with what kind of guts do i have to go and ask sharukh to not only do a cameo but to come to kashmir to get into a costume and, and plus we i had already you know sharukh never says no to me and he um This, I had that would have been amazing. This is what I asked for. Like I remember when we went as a team to ask him to play that massive, impactful cameo in Brahmastra. At the end of the day, he looked at us and he said, "It's Karan, and I, I, I can never say no." I know that I can't take that empowered feeling for granted. I can't keep going back. You know, I remember in an air drill, I knew that who else but Shahrukh could say, "Ek tarfa ki pyar ki taakat hi kuch aur hoti hai." I was like, "Or who can say it? Or who can say it?" You know. is me sirf mera haq hai sirf mera and i was like you need the king to recite those dialogues you know so i was like uh, who's now an emperor by, by the way uh, i i told him i said now we have to just like call you emperor khan now that's that's the new name um and i was like i went and asked him he said yes went on ramastra he said yes i he has never said no i said so i have to pick and choose uh my favors so i thought this one i let it go i won't go because i'll be so embarrassed to ask yet again because you know he gave us on brahmastra nearly 12 to 14 days uh didn't charge a penny just was there with full love and full just energy and that's I a lot of that's time to that's it he he's on just a cameo artist as well more than especially anything. a film that large where he could have very easily or said so many stories about at, at minimum pay me just what even basic rate it, yeah. would be Amazing. that's very very Amazing. sweet of him so you know someone recently Not that he needs the that money that bnc for karan johar film is in the overseas market you are one of the very few filmmakers who has a strong audience base in the international market When was the first time that you felt the love internationally, and what according when you to you? When you saw our stupid reactions, connect? I think it was uh, <laughs> uh, the first time that I went um, to London and to a theatre called at called um, it was in Feltham, Cine World at Feltham. Um, it's where a bulk of the Asian community comes, and I watched K3G, and I went in, and there was a, a gentleman called Andrew who ran the chain, and he was like. I'm very sad to meet you. Who's this director who's made it to top three of the UK box office with Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings in the same, uh, and you're number three? And and he's saying there are queues in the cold to come to see this film. And and when I went to the theatre, it was like they were reacting to everything. Like you know when, when there's a scene when Kajal says, "Vapas chalo Rahul, ye na hamara desh hai na hamare log hai," and they all stood up and clapped. And I was like, I was like, you all really want to leave? Then why you here? <laughs> <laughs> because they were all like the emotion was so strong and it was so and I was like so I was so overwhelmed with that feeling. I think it was in that point that I realized that there was some kind of connection that the films had had with the diaspora and um, I really feel grateful for the love that comes because eventually everyone is from our country and you know sometimes they're disconnected uh, geographically but their connection is still so deep and I think it's the value system in the films that actually connects with them and you know helps us achieve the numbers <laughs> so this is a question i usually ask the actors but i think it is more relevant for you than anyone else you are friends with almost everyone in the film industry and every actor every person who is working over here wants to do a dharma film or a karan johar director here how difficult does it get for you to say no to actors when they come to you and say that we want to do this film but you feel it is someone else who fits the fits the bill mm. uh, uh, it's a good question i mean you know 
Actually, I haven't worked with a lot of people, uh, a lot of actors. I worked with Shah Rukh in in over five films um, as as director and as producer. More than that, um, I then worked with Ranbir. Uh, before that, with Varun and Sid, who the first film it was, and with Ranbir and now Ranbir. So I actually haven't had the massive opportunity of working with a lot of actors. But because we produce many films, I've interacted and worked with many stars. Um, you know, I have a very, um, I have very genuine relationships with all of them. So every time I've ever been in an awkward moment where an actor has come and said, I want to be in a film, but I've gone to someone else, it's never happened. Because uh, I think everybody knows your reasons, right? Uh, for going to who you go to. And uh, I still want to work with so many of them because I feel like as a director, I still haven't worked with a lot of actors. You know, um, uh, even when I directed um, Ranbir, it was like, for the first time I had ever worked with a movie star beside Shah Rukh Khan, yeah. you know, and when I worked with Ranveer, it was, again, it was a, a, a rare experience for me, but a wonderful one. Uh, when I directed Alia on Rocky Rani, I felt I'd never directed her before because the Alia on Sundar was a different actor. The Alia Bhatt who faced the camera as Rani Chatterjee in Rocky Rani was like, I was like, who taught you to be this brilliant? Like, it wasn't me. Like, it wasn't me. I have no, I have absolutely... Uh, and, I, and Alia told me uh, not to praise her a lot, but because we get trolled for that a lot. That you know, every time I I praise Alia Bhatt, it's like we do too. Oh, he goes on and we on. Get, about we get trolled for praising uh, Alia as well. You know, and Renvir. She's like my firstborn in many ways. So like I have like pride for her. But I always say like Student of Deha was her professional launch, her emotional launch, but her true career launch is Highway. You know, mm. I think that's that that truly is what cemented her career as an artist. Um, it was a student of the year. I promise I taught her nothing. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to like, maybe look glamorous, but that wasn't the prerequisite to being a great artist. So when I directed her, and I was like, oh my God, like she's fantastic. And I don't know how this happened. Like she's just become this fantastic actor. 2022 was not really a good year for the industry. Now 2023, the tides have changed and how? Be right from Pathan to uh, Gadar, Oh My God, Jawan, Rocky Rani Ki Prem Kaani, Dream Girl, Fukri and so many more. Having observed the trends of trends with regards to the kind of content that is working, how, as a producer, what do you think has changed in the last three years? Oh God, loaded. Um, so I think pre-pandemic, there were certain kind of films that were definitely exciting an audience that, mm -hmm. was that were either specifically um, and not tentpole or big yeah, event action films, but very substance oriented films. I think a lot of that has changed post pandemic. Uh, those that are completely substance based and message based or probably emotional dramas, human dramas, love stories perhaps, have been so actively streamed. Like when you go onto any of the streaming services, there's so much of that kind of content, thrillers, you know, that people are. I don't think investing their time and money in cinema halls. So for cinema halls to get there, those bums on seats, I think the big tentpole films or the films that really actually um, have like crazy word of mouth from day one. Um, but that's tough. It's become tough. So everything that has worked has been an event film. Uh, Javan, Pathan. Didn't Pathan, OMG 2 do well though? Um, even Dream Girl is a sequel. I thought it did. Fukri is a sequel. So sequels have also... Oh, sequels. The sequels that's are the he, first parts and second saying. parts were really appreciated. Uh, for us, I think Rocky Rani worked purely on the strength of its word of mouth. Um, we didn't open to a grand number, uh, but I think the film got the love and that's why it just went on doing the business it did. Um, and Ranveer and Alia got so much love. And here I have to take a beat and just say, before I get into that, Working with Ranveer Singh was just an amazing, exhilarating experience. Like he is, a, he's a juggernaut of talent. Like he is just something else, uh, like a chameleon. Like he can go from Khilji to Murad to like, like to literally to-, to Personally, Rocky, I'm not a big fan. Kapil Dev, I mean like, like you, you know, and then <laughs> Vipika tells me like, like every six months a new person walks into the house. Like, you know, yep. uh, because he becomes that character. Like he would talk like Rocky throughout. Like he just start, he, in his conversations with me, I was talking to Rocky Randhava, I was not talking to Ranveer Singh. He would say like, you know, uh, uh, how's you? And like, he would call me and say, uh, Ranveer Singh this side. And like, everything was like, and I was like, oh God, like I'm not being able to have a normal conversation with this man. But he never left that character. It was phenomenal. Um, I had to just say it because I'm so grateful for him and the film. But going back to your question, so yeah. So, I mean, we have to walk on, on, a tie, on thin ice right now when we plan our films. Uh, to make sure that they their syntax is theatrical. Do you believe that there's this entire narrative on social media about the concept of superstars? Do you believe franchises and IPs are the new superstars and there are not enough superstars we have? I mean, I think your film is your superstar. 
you know i think you've got even if you have a superstar your film's got to work you know we know that sharuk salman akshay ritik ajay they're all massive superstars and in younger generation we have so many of them uh sharuk has proven this year that you know that that he's befitting of that glorious crown look at the numbers they're fantastic like i've never dreamt of i mean i think i'd go mad if i saw these numbers coming out of a film i made but it's like i'm so proud that it's sharuk uh but yes eventually the film is a superstar there's no bigger superstar than the film itself and so when you when we talk of rocky or ani ki prem kahani i know that Uh, there was a lot of pressure around the film before the release because you know like you said franchises and ten pole films were happening w- what was the moment when you realized that okay we have made it the first day fantastic reviews everyone is talking about the film the performance and slowly the audience word of mouth kicked in and the film went where it had to but when was it where you felt that okay we have made it a original hindi language film non franchise has gone and uh i was very stressed i think i was going to have a cardiac arrest uh, uh, <laughs> the the week uh, before and the days following that um i don't think anyone anyone who knows me closely will know that when i mean stressed it was physically like my body was like shivering and shaking like i was like i felt like i really seeked the validation with this film it's been it was a seven year gap and a three year a three year tough time you know it's the trolling the anxiety had built um there was a lot of negativity that surrounded uh me personally as well as the industry and uh, it wasn't easy on me or my my mom um it was a tough time for us as a family when we had to combat it i don't feel like i should put so much focus on success in general but this time i felt i didn't need the success as much as i needed the validation that i'm still a relevant filmmaker that can talk to an audience today somehow even if i felt it i needed to believe it and i needed to see it the proof lies in the pudding um and i needed to know that all the trolling was just virtual noise that's not really true that if an audience really loves you they will come if they like your film they will come uh they won't judge you for by perception but i needed himesh for me to really see that because and that had built this ball of anxiety and i was just like and there were literally there were times of tears which is rolling down my face because I, but on friday and then saturday i don't think i've ever received this kind of love filmmakers actors like were calling me like the audiences were reaching out to me from everywhere people were telling me they were going back to see the film uh, i've never felt so respected as a filmmaker and i've always had this not angst but this feeling like i i, I don't think i think they don't take me as seriously as they should uh, but i felt like serious filmmakers were calling me serious actors were messaging me and you know really revered and respected actors were like this is great like make more like this you know this had the best messaging and yet entertaining and like i was by monday i was like okay i think we are kind of walking home uh we'll get there but i think i feel we can celebrate it from now onwards so it was the monday of the release that i really i took my first breath uh and uh it felt so good i can't tell you so when we speak of dharma productions what are the ips and franchises that you want to create going going forward yeah i don't know uh i don't know how to plan these things you know uh i feel like you have some that's yeah yeah we have i mean uh we do want to make a dulhania uh we do want to do that uh, at some point i hope that we do it's uh, a love story franchise that actually doesn't exist uh, it's only us that made it humpty badri and now we're looking forward to making another dulhania um we're creating as we speak a couple which i don't want to reveal at that point unless you break the story uh uh, uh which sometimes shocks all of us we're like how the hell did he find out like who's 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 the pink villa mole in dharma <laughs> <laughs> but i i i go by stories much more than because i feel like many people make projects um uh, and those never result in good films i think we have to make a franchise only when it's a good story but not by just the the fact that it's a two or three or four um you know i think not everything should be a two you know uh, just by adding two to something doesn't make it while sometimes commercially i'm given that advice uh it doesn't always come organically for me though i will do it and i will do it for commercial reasons but many a time i wonder like is this being fair to an audience you know because i feel like you're just adding two to one but i does it really need a two you know make another film with another title it's so great but i know the world does it hollywood does it we're doing it it's been successful um My belief is, if a story needs to continually vanish, I've been asked so many times that, oh, why can't you make K three G two? And you know, I'm like, that story was what it was. It yeah, I don't think that needs know? a so, that too. I don't know. I, my faith is more in stories than in numbers and franchises. 
I think in 2022 you announced that you want to direct an action film. Yes. Is that are you working on that? Are you planning to make it someday? Someday? Or is it your next? As a, I mean, let's just say that what I I, I normally when I announce something I mean it. <laughs> that would be interesting. I think. I mean, see, to me, um, not that I'm talking kill. about my, anything that I'm doing in specific. When I mean action, I believe action is also a result of an emotion. just fighting for no reason is a film that will go nowhere i think motivationally the That's action exactly comes from a strong said. Piece of emotion and emotion yep. is something that i love to project so for me action is a subset emotion is the the front star yeah. you know so if i can crack that narrative yeah the justification for the action center, comes from the story and the yeah. action will follow you to be especially yeah. the emotion for Karen Johar yes yes that yes. that's good to know, yeah, good to hear the rest of the world to kind of you know i just don't i i don't one thing is like uh, while popcorn is great but uh, making just a popcorn action film is not something that i would be excited by and before we move on to fan question this is a question which if i don't ask a lot of people on twitter would be angry 25 years back you teamed up with salman for the first time yes <laughs> <laughs> and since then there has not been a collaboration there have been multiple instances where conversations happens but things didn't materialize i believe that is finally happening could you tell us something what it is is it happening how <laughs> uh I, so the thing is um i have to tell you that uh, i have the deepest respect for salman and his entire family my father is very close to salim saab and that, i told you how salman said yes to the film like he said it on the basis of the fact that he loved my dad and and that has never left my heart um all i can say is, at this moment is that uh, that relationship will hopefully find a celluloid space very soon Okay, so hopefully announcement. I'm not yeah. saying it. I'm not denying it. I'm just not because <laughs> I'm like I, I'm I'm superstitious about certain things, you know. So I feel I feel like I should just like say it when the time is right. And one last thing, Karan sir. Twenty uh, five years in the industry, you have seen it all. What is it that is there on your bucket list? What is it that you aspire to do going forward? To be interviewed you know, by us. When I began my career, there were a couple of <laughs> artists who were on my bucket list. Oh, us. Us. One of them was. Mr. Rishi Kapoor, oh. who I directed in Student of the Year and okay. produced with Kapoor and Sanjay Nagnipat. One of them was working with Mr. Bachchan, who I had the pleasure of directing twice. One of them was who I'm a crazy fan of, Lata Ji, and she sang for me uh, title song of Kabhi Kushi Kabhi Gham. Mm -hmm. One of them was working with with the late Sri Devi. Um, mm. I feel like that was a desire that that unfortunately went unfulfilled. Um, I have no as no dream that I feel hasn't been realized but what I do and what I tell everyone is like every day I make a new dream for myself and that dream could be a story to tell um an expansion plan for my studio or a relationship that I want to enhance my dreams are not restricted to just the movies they're also restricted to like I dreamt of having children And when I had them, I feel like that was one of my Aww. most beautiful dreams that were fructified. Does he have twins? And now I dream for them. So my dreams are so. Uh, Does he have twins? I guess they, so. They have, my dreams have, have twins. also. Uh, We can talk about it. Taken a leap, and they've gone more from just professional, but also to personal. Now, when I wake up every day, I dream new dreams for myself, but I also dream big dreams for my children. Thank you so much, Karan sir, for doing this conversation. I hope you liked it. Yes, yeah, thank you. I had a great time. Thank you so much. Thank you for everyone for being here. Thank you. Just thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. And 25 years done. Looking forward to another 25 years celebrating cinema, celebrating your films yeah. and everything. Thank you. Thank you, Imesh. Thank you. Old and jolly, oh God. Okay. Hopefully, inshallah, we'll meet again. Okay. Pink villa. What? He's an easy interview. Oh yeah. You just ask him one good question and he will give you a very I think he had less, wonderful long answer. I think he had less than 10 questions there for an I hour. I think so. For yeah, for an hour long interview. interview. I think there was like less than 10 questions. Yeah. Um and so yeah, it, I mean, he's a host and so he knows yeah. how to to fill a, a fill a space. Yeah. With, with uh, uh he yeah, he's never really at a loss for words. It's yeah. really wonderful. Um he also he's um, he's a he, he's a good interview because one he's he's an intelligent man. He knows the industry very well. He's also very self-aware, which is one of my favorite things about him in terms of the fact that he 
one, he wears a producer hat and a director's hat simultaneously. Yeah. And so, like, when he's talking certain ways, he's like, "As this is me talking as a producer. Right. I've told people to make sequels for, because that, that will make you money. Right. I also don't like it. Right. As, a, <laughs> as an artist, because it needs to have a continual story. So I, I think he, he wears those hats, because it's got to be difficult, because, you know, the first thing that speaks for us is obviously as actors and artists, but obviously as a producer, you need to think a different way or you're not going right. to be a producer very long. No. <laughs> you have to think in terms of dollars and cents. Right. Those are the people that do. We've said that many times. Those are the people that can care about box office, that can do it because that's – they're the ones that, that fund it. But he's all – I love his introspectiveness in terms of like what he was talking about, My Name is Khan. He's mm -hmm. like, I felt like I was the most wrong casting mm -hmm. for this film as the director. Right. Which – you can see why, because he has a certain style of cinema sure. that he does extremely well, right. and that is his brand. Um, but I think obviously he succeeded, and he when he pushes himself, he he can he can do it. What do you think? Yeah, uh, and the other thing revealed, which is just the same repetitive thing over and over again, is relationships. Um, in any industry, it's that way. But what causes people to be able to do work he exists in the industry yeah because of the relationships he had and predominantly because of the belief that Shah Rukh Khan had in him when he really didn't understand I mean his thought was yeah that's really nice of you to say there's no way Shah Rukh Khan's doing a movie with me and then he just follows up and does that um it 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 you have to be talented yeah. But it also goes back to it's it's about the relationships and people working with you, wanting to work with you. Um, and again, just a wonderful again, would love to talk to him because he's one of those interviews that I know that just it would be tough because you would only be able to probably get in five or six questions because he would give you such a, a, a long, wonderful answer. Um, yeah, he would be really interesting. Yeah. He, where did the saying, do you know, proof in the pudding come from? My suspicion is England. The proof is in the pudding. Why is it in the pudding, though? Well, it's the outcome of the recipe. You may say well, you. Why can... did it? Why is it pudding? The the the, the proof uh, is in every recipe. It's true. I. I why did it, Why is it pudding? No, the etymology of that I'm sure exists. I have no idea why it was specifically the pudding. Yeah, but very yeah, strange to me. it is. Also, the fact that like back in the day. The casting, and that was here too. The casting process for films was so different. Yeah. Now, and rightfully so, everybody is a brand, and so actors, even though you know, you probably it's, it's annoying to them that they take so long and they have to think about stuff so difficult. You kind of have to, especially if the stars that he usually works with, the caliber. You have to weigh certain things, especially in Indian cinema, it's very different as well. Yeah. Because if you have two flops, you nobody's going to work with you. Right. Because now you're a flop actor. Like, it's such a different industry than anything here, as opposed to actors here will choose, like, you know, nobody nobody uh, thinks Leonardo DiCaprio is not a good actor, <laughs> not because his films don't make a um, hundred million right. dollars. Right. Um, it's a, it's just a different industry, uh, the in a different time in each industry. It is. Um, but it's still the same with relationships. Oh yeah. You know, I I promise there's there's things that have happened if we talk to him about it. Where if you said to either Bob De Niro or, or Martin Scorsese, and you said. Did you just agree to do the film because they were doing it? I, I don't think Robert De Niro would say no to Marty. Yeah. I think he wouldn't even need to read the script. Marty would say, "Hey, Bobby, I have this movie Clearly, that we're doing." Leo has never said no to Marty yeah. either. No, I, I they just the working relationships are so trusted. Johnny's never said no to Tim. It's yeah, it's one of those things. Yeah, Tim Burton says to Johnny, "Hey, I got an idea for something." I don't think Johnny's going to tell him well, I he, need to read the script first. No, he's said that many times. Yeah, I, I'll just I'll work with that person. Because I trust them and I know what we're gonna do. Yeah. So yeah. Um, but also like the fact that back <laughs> Salman, he's like, yeah, I like your dad. I'll do. I don't need to read the part of the film that I'm in. <laughs> and while he doesn't need the money, it, I, it really needs to be highlighted that Shah Rukh Khan would do what he did for Brahmastra gratis. That he would take twelve days, be a huge contributor to the buzz of the film. And just do it because he loves Karan. And it also speaks a lot about Karan Johar that you heard him say, I know this is, again, it's about relationships. And can I not only are you talented, but can I trust you? 
he knows that if he picks up the phone, if he want, SRK would have gone to Kashmir. Mm -hmm. He would have done it. But he respects the relationship that he will never violate the relationship. And that's really, really important. Although that would have been an amazing That would have really been movie. amazing. And I bet even now, <laughs> Shah Rukh is probably talking to him and saying, why didn't you tell me that? I would have done that for you. And he uh, says, no, I'm I'm not going to take advantage that of our relationship. That would have been an amazing cameo just to have Shah Rukh Khan and Kajol in, in uh, Kashmir. <laughs> Her in a beautiful sari spreading yeah. his arms. Yeah. That would have been amazing. You know how much I love that movie. That would have been, that would have uh, been really fun. That would have been a lot of fun. He's always Always such a fun interview, and the fact, like, the, the just the casting, like the fact that he was an AD and Shower Khan. Not only was like, I want to be a, your next film, I want to yeah. be your first director or film. He's never seen anything Karen Johar done, and then to subsequently follow up <laughs> and be like, this is going to happen, uh, Karen. <laughs> And I'm going to make it happen. Right. And then also the fact that Kieran never had a script. <laughs> like just, just was ooh. writing it in his own handwriting and One making hilarious copies. and also not surprising with that film at all. And how like different the, the two have. I also would love to talk to him specifically about what it was <laughs> like me. for him and his DP. Because you know that first film. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know what he's doing. No, not at all. He's just got ideas and his experienced DP is there to help make it look good. Yeah. So that when it's done, he's he's the one going, uh, guys, yeah, I, I really that happens to so many directors who the first thing that they're doing, they don't know what they're doing. In fact, was it him? There was some director we we talked uh, there was a uh Someone said, oh, no, I think it was Vishal. It was Vishal. You didn't hear it. It was in his master class where he talked about the very first thing he was directing. He was so unaware of terms and what to do that crew were laughing at him. Talking about Mukti? Yes. The horror? Yes. That the crew was laughing. Not mockingly, but giggling over the fact that this is the guy directing the film. And he. it would be like having a guy on set and talking and having somebody say to the director, just tell them it's camera right. <laughs> or that piece of tape on the ground is called a mark. It, it's that, he said, I knew so little about it. it it's, I feel like but it's he didn't let him stop him. I feel like it's having a lot in Indian cinema specifically because we've seen so many first-time directors get these massive stars. It's relationships. Somehow. It's relationships. Um, and it's, it's quite I incredible. It's a very unique part of Indian cinema. Uh, but yeah, yeah even more so than here. I mean, in every industry, it's about relationships. I think India is a, is far more willing, just based on energy, to an emotion and relationship, to give people a shot. And do you think it's because it's more of a star system still in India, maybe? Yeah, and it's a double-edged sword in that so regard. The, it's not the director really carrying it. It's the, it's the actor it depends on the director too, yeah. but but I think we see it so much. Big breaks, and I mean big in terms of the notoriety of a film and being able to work with name people. Yeah. That typically here doesn't happen to people unless you've paid your dues, so to say. Yeah, you've you've gone through the ranks. You've been a first AD. You've you've done. You don't just go straight to directing Meryl Streep. That very rarely ever happens here. And it seems to happen all the time there. And I think that's a very cool thing. Um, do it with us. I think we're going to be on your bucket list. Yeah. I feel like he's seen something about Since it. he watches everything, it would not surprise me. I feel like he's at least seen something. It would not surprise me. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I hope he has. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you have, then you will know we want to talk to you. And, and we would like to work with you. Oh, absolutely! Uh, some of the white actors in your films are some of the worst I've ever seen. Yeah, if you've got any, if you need any guys that can <laughs> in your action act. film that can actually deliver act. a line and not make it look pathetic, uh, it, it, we, we're competent. Unless that's just the vibe you're going for. Yeah, films. if you, we can be bad on purpose. Oh yeah. But so we're also going to tell people you told us that. Exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll emblazon it everywhere. So we're going to be terrible, but Karen Jar told us to be. <laughs> Just want you to know. Exactly. <laughs> Anyways, that was great. Uh, let us know what you thought about the interview. Uh, what other interviews would we watch? We still have uh, quite a few uh, of his films to get to. Uh, I think uh, Kank. Yeah. Is the one that I really want to get to. I know yeah. Johnny really likes that Johnny one. Johnny likes Kank. Uh, and then also uh, Student of the Year. 
first one. Yeah, the first People one. People actually like a lot. Yeah. Um, in terms of a kind of need to do that both for that and for Alia. For Alia's first yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, student, not Student of the Year 2. I know a lot of people that one was not good. Yeah. Um, and then what? But he's only got seven, so there's not a lot to have to follow oh, we up had, on we, there. We haven't seen uh, his, his one with Ranbir, though. We've seen a lot of Right. Aldil uh, or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Aldil? Uh, Aldil. Something like that. Yeah. Anyways. Any old who. You let us know down below uh, what should be his next one we should watch. Thank you so much. Josh!